you know what? I'll just say this. Is the grocery store gonna get mad at me if I complain about the carts not being returned? Wait, what? <laughs> like, if I come on the podcast and complain about something or talk about something, yeah. am I supposed to talk about no people, places, or things while I'm here? Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. If you are new here, my name's Taylor. I come to you from Baltimore City, Maryland, and here on my YouTube channel, I feature content that's generally focused on knitting and spinning. In today's episode of what I call the Thread to Men podcast, I'm gonna sit down and share with you all the things that I completed knitting in 2023. I have five finished garments to talk about, Two are designed by Andrea Mowry. Two are designed by Stephen West. The fifth is a self-designed pattern um, that I will leave to last. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the materials I used in making these, a few thoughts I had in the process of making them, and I guess ultimately what I thought of the pattern writing or construction. I'll start with what I'm wearing, and that is the throw over again, by Andrea Mowry. I, um, I knit my very first sweater using an Andrea Mowry pattern. In fact, the very first thing that I ever knit from start to finish with a pattern was an Andrea Mowry pattern. So I grew up as a knitter creating projects designed by Andrea Mowry. So she is very much like mother in my knitting sphere, but I feel like I have come a very long way in knitting garments to actually fit me. In the beginning, it was just, can I read these instructions? Can I understand what they say? Am I able to execute what it is they're telling me to do? And will I end up with something I can wear in the end? And I'm not sure exactly how long ago that was, maybe seven or eight or nine, or it could be 10 years, I don't know. Um, that has changed with each and every garment I have made. So one thing that I learned in past years is that I do not enjoy the fit of a yoke sweater. I just don't. I've never knit a yoke sweater that I liked to wear. <laughs> they always felt very, um, not just constrictive in the widest width of the shoulders, but I also felt like sometimes the necks never sat quite right or I would always have to adjust them here or there. And one thing that I learned, I guess after making sweaters that did not fit me ideally, is that I can knit a yoke sweater different than I have before and it will fit better than previous sweaters. So going into this project, I knew I don't like the way yoke sweaters feel, I don't like the way they fit, but I really like the look of this particular design. It was very popular when published. I think I waited a year or more before casting it on. I kind of let the idea of knitting this garment sort of marinate, and I waited until I had the perfect combination of yarns to knit it. So um, I think I had started with picking out the contrast colors, and I might have, I think I did purchase the main color on a short vacation when we visited the Harrisville Designs mill. So I I think I used, I think I bought four skeins. I only cracked into three skeins for this entire um, DK weight. It's actually a worsted weight pattern, but the Harrisville Designs yarns, you can kind of stretch it into, that. you can stretch their DK weight yarns into the worsted realm, um, which I do like to do living in Maryland. It is, rather hot in the summer and the winters are very mild. They are more and more mild every year. There's probably two days out of the year that I can get wear out of anything heavier than a DK weight sweater. So um, that was my train of thought when choosing a DK weight yarn for this garment. And uh, the contrast colors that I chose, one is my hand spun, this green, green, this gray, uh, two ply hand spun is a very early spin from a machine carded Jacob fleece that was given to me from someone I met through Ravelry who happened to live in a neighborhood just north of me. And the center color was a skein of yarn I had. Actually, I'm knitting 
the rest of my sweater quantity of this yarn right now. I'm hoping I can finish it by the end of this year, but I'm I'm trying to like finish it on January 1st so I can just include it in next year's roundup because it is a pattern I plan to publish and you won't really hear about it until 2024 or at least you won't hear more about it. Anyway, I love this center color here between the two. It is Brooklyn Tweed's Shelter Yarn in the color Caraway. It is a marled yarn where one ply is yellow and the other ply, ply is green, gray, green, gray, gray, gray. So um, then the third contrast is Stephen and Penelope's Bicycle Yarn. I held double. It's a two ply fingering weight construction that I, held two together to make a worsted-ish weight. And instead of knitting the smallest size, which I had always done, and always complained about the shoulders being too tight, I finally realized I could actually knit a size larger. <laughs> it might fit me better. And I chose the second size. Size two has a finished bust circumference of 38 inches. My bust is close to 32. And she recommends that it's worn with two to six inches of positive ease. So I went with six inches of positive ease. I would think it's about that. It's possible that my finished project came out maybe a little smaller. I did add, I think only two, potentially three extra rows of plain stockinette stitching with the main color before splitting for the sleeves to give me just the slightest bit of extra depth in the yoke. And that is because I could anticipate that the upper arms of this design were gonna be a little tighter than I typically wear my sweaters. They don't fit me tightly, but they have almost no ease to the upper arms. Um, and I think the combination of that and a slightly less deep yoke does make things feel like a little small and I wanted it to feel like it fit a little bit looser. Does that make sense? If I'm not mistaken, the majority of the shoulder shaping to this pattern is knit on the back side with short rows beneath the color work section. So you're working a, a sliver of extra fabric along the back to very gently bring the back neck up. It fits comfortably around the neck, even though there's not a whole lot of shaping in this area of the garment. I think it was very easy to execute. Um, if you're new to color work and you want to knit a color work sweater, such as this one, I do recommend the pattern. It's very easy to follow um, from what I remember, but I would, if you're new to yoke sweaters, think about maybe knitting a size larger than you typically would, and you'll probably be happier with the way that it fits and feels if you're anything like me. And I am very sensitive about the underarms in my garments. I don't like feeling um, that my wool fabric is sandwiched in a very warm and moist area where there's a lot of movement because sweaters are destined to felt with all three elements combined. So love this garment. I wear it only in the winter because it is quite warm being a DK plus worsted color work. Like this is very dense fabric up here, especially my hand spun being a rather densely spun yarn. This is a thick sweater, especially in this area, even if the rest of it is a rather open, gauge of DK. Um, it's warm. It's very warm. So I only really wear it December, January, February. Um, I have knit uh, another Andrew Mary pattern. As I mentioned, it is the Shifty Cowl. I knit this using my hand spun yarn. And when I have spun yarn over the years, I always end up with a little bit of extra singles on a bobbin here or there. And whenever I've completed uh, one or another spins, I will take whatever remnants I have available to clear my bobbins. I will ply them together to create um, marled yarn, typically. And I saved and saved and saved all of my remnant spin skeins, little skeins of yarn I had here and there. And I thought the shifty was the perfect application of all of my little remnant hand spun skeins. 
So I turned those into this. I don't know that my gauge was completely on point. I don't know that I even measured my gauge, to be honest. I probably could have simply knit this with a different needle and gotten a different result. But you cast on and you work a flat edge from the beginning and then ultimately you get all the way around and you have a very long row. And then before you finish, you work another flat edge that is in the end adjacent to it so that it is sewn up together. And when I put it on, very often, the back of the cowl, I, I think maybe because it doesn't sit wide enough on my shoulders unless I intentionally stretch it, it will not fill the gap between my sweaters and my neck. So I have to very intentionally adjust this piece and then I have all this extra fabric because of how long it is. I never really pull this out to wear all that much because I I have to adjust it more than I would like. I want to fold in like all of this extra fabric and then just like figure out what to do with it. I don't know, it's sort of heavier in the front than in the back. So as time goes on, even if I adjust the back neck to cover the back of my sweater, it always ultimately kind of falls to the back neck. And then you can sort of see here how there's this gap that I have to accommodate. I think if I had knit the shawl, I would have been a little happier. I don't wear a lot of cowls. In fact, this is one of two cowls that I do wear. And um, I will talk about my other cowl in a future video. But in terms of this one, it's just maybe I just haven't spent enough time with it. I haven't spent enough time figuring out how to wear this and it being this kind of cool tone, sort of green, gray moment. I don't have a lot of things that I want to wear it with. Yeah. Next, I wrapped up, it took me a very long time to knit this, um, Stephen West's Slip Stravaganza shawl. This is an incredible design. I do feel a little like a pastel clown when I wear this because it's so intense. It's a very intense design. I feel like I'm wearing something very out of the ordinary because you would never find something like this in a store, which makes it both unique and I think quite loud. But I knit it with very soft and quiet colors. The majority of which, although that might be a lie, I would say maybe half, are all of my hand spun yarns. So um, the main color to start is, I don't know, six or seven 50 gram skeins of a Barocco yarn. And I paired that with three colors of my hand spun. In fact, all three colors you see here in this section, all those contrast colors are my hand spun yarn that I naturally dyed in the raw wool form. Well, I had washed and scoured the wool. I naturally dyed it with materials I gathered in my local area. And then I spun into a two ply after hand combing on my hand combs. And this project was a beast. It took a very long time to knit. Um, it's probably one of the largest and most intricate shawls I've ever made. I chose the main color from my stash. It was yarn that I had purchased a very long time ago, actually on our honeymoon in 2016 from the Knitwit in Portland, Maine. It's a Morocco yarn. I think it's some sort of alpaca blend. So it has a ton of drape and it's very soft and it has a very sort of gentle halo. And then I had a random silk, not silk, um, merino nylon sock yarn um, in a kind of peach-ish, beige color that I got in some free mail order situation. And I held that with a skein of silk mohair that was naturally dyed by Ocean by the Sea. I picked that up at a wool festival years ago. And I'm quite happy with this. At first I was not sure if I loved this piece because it's a very cool tone pastel color scheme that doesn't quite match 
the majority of my wardrobe but I have found plenty of things to wear it with. It's one of my favorite shawls to wear to the office and that's that. I do love this though. It's so soft, it's so big. And I will say probably the highest contrast to that is my second Stephen West garment I knit this year. It is the Bubble Cardigan. And I knit this, let's see if I can layer this over top of what I'm wearing. I knit this with Mostly Stephen and Penelope yarn. I placed a huge order maybe a, a year ago now. I think soon after I bought it, I cast on this project. But the black, the dark hunter green, the yellow, and the kind of avocado green, those are all Stephen and Penelope. The light green and the dark green, kind of muddy brown green, those are both Loft from Brooklyn Tweed. And the orange red color is a single skein from Biche and Bouche to Ply Lamb's Wool. It's quite oversized. It took a very long time to knit. Um, and when I started knitting the gauge for this project, I was like, oh no, what did I get myself into? Because I had never knit a bubble stitch before and I was a little intimidated by it. And so, at first I hated the idea of actually making this and then I realized it's actually very easy. <laughs> it's like six row repeat and five of the six rows are just stockinette knitting. I did enjoy the making of this. I won't knit it again because I think once you have one bubble cardigan you've had enough but I did not hate the process um, even though it was an all over textured pattern. So uh, not much else to say there. Probably one of the like boldest all over color things I've ever made, which is a stark contrast to the one other Stephen West pattern that I finished. And the last and final is a self-drafted pattern. I worked from the top down with a cable stitch motif at the very center. I have held this sweater for 0.2 seconds and I already have mohair like itching my face. I knit this garment using a two ply fingering weight uh, sort of farm yarn. It, it was a yarn I picked up at Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool from the Shepherd, this from the Shepherdess. Um, they had it milled and it wasn't even labeled. It was just gorgeously hanging there and I knew I needed it. And I held it together with a silk mohair by Biche and Bouche. I will say it's not my favorite silk mohair. It's not my least favorite silk mohair, but I probably won't buy it again because after knitting and wearing the Isegar's silk mohair, I can never go back. It's the only silk mohair for me and it's the only silk mohair I will ever repurchase thus far. So although I'm really happy I have this garment, I I do feel like it makes my face itch because I just get little hairs stuck to the oils of my face and I cannot handle it. But uh, other than that, the fabric is really comfortable. It's not at all itchy unless I'm sweating in like the late spring or early fall when the temperatures fluctuate. It could be a little too warm to wear, more so than the Isayar silk mohair, which is again, all I'll ever buy in the future. Um, I could have knit this a tiny bit longer, but it's a cropped pattern. Um, the, I, I could say the same thing for the yoke. The yoke is like a standard raglan size and shape, but I could have knit that a little bit longer too. I could have made the same design for myself in this next size up and really, you know, liked the fit of it even more. But that's about it <laughs> for this week's episode of the Thread to Men podcast. I wonder what you accomplished making in 2023. Are there any projects that really stood out to you as like huge achievements? I think that the slip extravaganza is probably my biggest achievement this year, other than, of course, publishing another pattern. I am always a little proud to put things like that out into the world. Um, but I'm excited to cast on and knit 
other designers. I know that I already told you what I'm knitting in 2024, but I've swapped one out for another. And we will talk about that next week. And I have at least one skein I need to cake up and be ready to cast on January 1st for the, what's that shawl I'm casting on? Whatever that one is. I'm gonna cast it on January 1st to be a participant in that knit along. And between now and then, I'm hoping I might finish the next self-designed top-down raglan pattern. So this time it's a it's another cardigan because I, I'm just on a cardigan kick. I need more cardigans in my life. If you made it to this week's premiere, I want to thank you so much for joining us in the live chat. Um, if you're still there, let us know what you're working on right now or what you're up to later on today. It is Christmas weekend which is probably a big deal for most of you. I approach Christmas like any other day. It's just another day. Um, I'm grateful for the things I have and try not to dwell on the things I don't. I do give my cats and dog a few extra treats during the holidays. I make sure they have a new toy here or there because they are my little fam. And that's that. If you want to find me on social media, my name is Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry Instagram, and you can find me on TikTok as Taylor Knits. I did have a video reach a lot of new people last week. So if you're new here to my channel, welcome. Do please subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and take care.